Yeah, we've reached the dizzy heights of episode 15 of my regular feature where I share with you my latest purchases from the perfume parlour. I've got a whopping seven bottle fragrance haul to run through with you all today. So to find out all about them and which ones I'd highly recommend and which ones I'd say slightly steer away from, stay tuned to Mugs Frags. <laughs> Yes, hello again everybody and thank you very much once again for tuning in to this latest episode of Mags Frags. I'm Paul and this is the 15th review of this little mini-series that focuses on my latest purchases from the perfume parlour. So if this is the first time that you've stumbled across my channel, uh, please feel free to go and check out all the other videos in this particular series, which you can now find in a dedicated perfume parlour playlist on the homepage of my channel. I've got a really solid list for you today including a couple of brand new ones to the perfume parlour, some fantastic ones for the summer and even a couple of um, cold weather bangers to wear on the uh, cooler summer evenings. But before I begin today's rundown, if you are interested in picking up any of the bottles that featured in today's video to try out for yourself, uh, you can use my unique discount code and get yourself 10% off your first order which I'll leave a direct link to down in the description. The link will direct you to a login page and you'll be asked to create a login name and a password uh, but once you've logged in and you've made all your purchases your discount will automatically be applied at the checkout. And as always guys just a quick disclaimer as I do on every video I don't work for the perfume parlour and this video is in no way sponsored by them in any way and they don't give me uh, any money to actually promote their products. Uh, all these opinions that you're about to hear today are my own opinions and I did buy all of these fragrances with my own money. I do however receive a small commission uh, just for recommending you to their website uh, so just by clicking on the link in the description you'll save you 10% whilst uh, supporting the channel and also helping me to bring you some more free content in the future. Okay, so first up today is a fairly new one to the perfume parlour and lots of people have requested that they do a copy of this particular fragrance uh, via the uh, Perfume Parlour Facebook group. So they've uh, obliged and created this one, so they obviously listen to their customers. And this one goes by the name of Power Intense and the Perfume Parlour code on this one is 1217. Yeah, this is a copy of Dior Homme Parfum, which is pretty much the daddy of the Dior Homme lineup. It's a rich and luxurious smelling fragrance and possibly the most complex and niche smelling designer scent that I think there is. The original is pretty much difficult to get hold of in the UK nowadays uh, and I had to get mine from Spain. I do, I did do a, a full length uh, in-depth review of the original in my 365 project on day 104 so again check that one out if you aren't familiar with how this one smells. But basically it's a powdery iris bomb with uh, the inclusion of leather and woody notes. It's also got some rose in there so some men will often describe it as smelling like lip stick or maybe like a, a woman's makeup bag or something like that. This perfume parlour copy is very close in terms of its accuracy and as soon as you spray it there's absolutely no mistaking what it's supposed to be. It's not quite as rich and smooth as the original when you smell them directly side by side but the difference I'd say is quite negligible and in the air it's basically like just smelling Dior Homme Parfum. The performance is brilliant on this uh, with a very strong projection for the first couple of hours and you'll get about 7 hours of longevity out of it which for a copy fragrance I think is excellent. It's a fragrance that you either love or you hate and there's kind of no middle ground to this one uh, but one, is, one thing is for sure is that you do definitely have to try it out for yourself because this is uh, one of the standout fragrances that's ever been created and uh, no collection uh, is complete without this one in it. Okay, so the second one in today's haul is called Manly and the uh, perfume parlour code on this one is 1665. This is a copy of Dolce & Gabbana Masculine which came out in 1999 and it's now pretty much impossible to get hold of unless you're willing to pay silly money for it so this perfume parlour copy will take you back down memory lane if uh, you ever wore this as your signature scent round about the uh, celebrations time of the new millennium. It's a lovely fresh green summer fragrance that opens up with bergamot and pettigrain uh, but there's also basil, mint and some white florals in there also which produces like a cool crisp scent profile that's super clean and uplifting. 
The bass is a selection of woody and earthy notes, including cedar, teak and vetiver, but there's also fig leaf and musk, which when all blended together, just produces a lovely, like a smooth pencil shavings type smell in the background. This is a very classy retro gentleman's fragrance that smells masculine and stylish and it's just one that I think would make a great office fragrance if you were, were to wear a sharp suit to work. It's got okay performance uh, but you probably need to reapply it a couple of times if you wanted to get a full solid day of wear out of it. Uh, this is a, an extremely likeable mass appealing kind of fragrance that will get you plenty of compliments during the day so yeah this is a really good one to pick up. Right up next is one that goes by the name of Ultimate Challenge and the perfume palette code on this one is 1011. This one is a copy of Prada Luna Rossa Extreme from 2013 which again is another discontinued fragrance that the perfume parlor have revived for the fans of the original version. This is a spicy amber fragrance which opens up fairly bright and peppery and to my nose has a resemblance to the original Le Mal from Jean-Paul Gaultier but without the uh, prominent mint note. There's bergamot, lavender and juniper berries in the opening which give it a fairly airy breezy feel but then there's also a dark side with uh, a large dose of amber, labdanum and vanilla which bring plenty of sweetness and warmth as it dries down. The keynote in this is the black pepper though and it's the spiciness, spiciness of the fragrance that really stands out the most and you do get a very peppery kick from the uh, scent pretty much throughout. It's a cross between Le Mal and Spice Bomb with also a little bit of um, Luna Rossa Sport thrown in for good measure and I really enjoy uh, this on a cool summer evening. It's a cracking scent and this perfume parlor copy is absolutely spot on in terms of its uh, accuracy. It performs really well and you'll catch wafts of this for a good 5 or 6 hours easily after you've first applied it. It's definitely worth picking up and trying out for yourself if you haven't already done so and it's uh, just a shame that the original actually got uh, discontinued because it was uh, a really good solid release. Okay so the fourth one that I'm going to talk about today is called Moorish and the perfume parlor code on this one is 1130. This is inspired by Sycamore from the Chanel exclusive blend collection and this is a fresh green and woody aromatic fragrance that was released in 2008. The notes in this are cypress, vetiver, juniper, aldehydes, pink pepper, violet, tobacco and sandalwood. Yeah, this is like taking a walk through the forest. It's very green and earthy but it's also very crisp and fresh. It gives off a very realistic outdoorsy type aroma with the vetiver and the uh, cypress being the main dominant notes in this in the opening and you really do get, uh, get a feel like you could be stood up against a sycamore tree when you smell this one. Uh, you also get a summery vibe from it with the violet and the aldehydes in the heart of the scent and there's also a slight pepperiness in there too. I'm personally not the biggest fan of the note of vetiver and in fact one of my least favourite fragrances of all time is Encre Noir Alex Trem by uh, Lalique so I'm always a little bit wary whenever I see the uh, vetiver note listed in a note breakdown uh, but this is not too dry and dusty and it manages to stay more fresh and green. This perfume parlor extract spray has really good performance for a fresh warm weather fragrance. It projects really well for the first hour or two and then it sits closer to the skin for the next maybe five or six hours. If you like vetiver fragrances or just green and woody fragrances in particular uh, then I'm sure that you'll really enjoy this one. It's uh, kind of a mature smelling scent and it's very unisex so men or women I'd say over the age of 30 are uh, most likely going to be drawn towards this one. Okay we're piling through them now and uh, this next one has a, a very very interesting note breakdown and this one goes by the name of French Origins and the perfume parlor code on this one is 0672. This is a copy of Zerius, Zerius Rouge is it from Givenchy uh, which came out in 1995, please forgive my pronunciation, I'm a Yorkshireman. Um, the top notes in this are cactus, Chinese orange and tarragon, in the mid there's pimento and African geranium and in the base there's cedar, sandalwood and white musk. 
Yeah, this is a very unique and interesting smelling fragrance that produces a mixture of citruses, green herbal notes, spices and woods. It's uh, semi-sweet with uh, a bit of a powdery, musky dry down, uh, but it's the cactus and the tarragon up top uh, that bring an interesting menthol-like herbal twist. And I've got to say that it's totally different to any of the other fragrances that I own, and it's uh, pretty difficult to describe if I'm honest. It's fairly peppery uh, and the pimento pepper in the heart of the scent is present in the opening and it stays right through into the dry down. And it actually opens up fairly bright with the orange and the cool green herbals blending nicely like with the geranium and the pimento uh, and for the most part what you get is a peppery kind of herbal scent. But as it dries down you get some sandalwood and musk uh, fr coming through from the base that bring a calming smooth creaminess to it. Overall, I really like how this smells, even though I'm not ashamed to admit it. I don't, I don't quite understand uh, what it is that I'm actually smelling in here. Um, it is a bit of a weird smelling fragrance, but weird in a good way. Uh, it would make a, a really pleasant summer evening fragrance because it's not too fresh, but it's also not too sweet either. It's one of those fragrances that would be just great when you're dressed up for a night out or going to a special event rather than just to wear as a, a casual dumb reach fragrance. It also projects really well and will definitely get you noticed so a decent little pick up if you're looking for something uh, a little bit different and quirky. So at number 6 on the list is one called Admiring and the perfume parlor code on this one is 1705. This is a copy of Tragedy of Lord George from the House of Penhaligans. The notes in this are amber, brandy, tonka bean and woody notes. So the original Tragedy of Lord George is a warm woody fragrance which is sweetened up slightly by the amber and tonka bean and then laced with the boozy note of brandy. But in this perfume parlour version I don't really get much in the way of brandy whatsoever and there's just no booziness in there. And out of all the fragrances that feature in today's video I'd say that this is possibly the least accurate in terms of how it replicates the original. But having said that, it's still a very pleasant smelling fragrance with a really strong prominent woodiness which is not too sweet so it'd be fine to wear uh, in a summer evening. But if you're looking to try out uh, some of the Penhaligon's range um, in copy versions from the perfume parlour, I'd recommend getting the Alfetti copy, the Cairo or the uh, Roaring Radcliffe over this one every day of the week. This is not something that I'd recommend as a blind buy, but if you're into your more drier, woody fragrances, then I would say uh, you might enjoy this one, but it's just uh, out of this batch today, this is probably the, uh, the least one that I enjoy. And finally, the last one in today's haul goes by the name of Rosy Smoke, and the perfume parlor code on this one is 0151. This is a copy of Red Tobacco from Mansera, which I've spoken about a couple of times now on the channel, including a full review of the original and also a clone that I picked up from uh, KDJ Inspired. But up until recently, I hadn't actually tried the Perfume Parlor version of it, so I thought I'd just give it a go and see how it compares and stacks up to the, uh, to the ones that I've already got. And I'm pleased to say that even uh, this standard spray is absolutely smack on. It smells pretty much identical to the original and it also performs brilliantly too. Red Tobacco, however, is not a fragrance that I would just casually recommend to anybody as a blind buy because it is a complex scent uh, that will challenge your senses, especially in the opening. It's one that I actually hated when I first smelled it, but for some reason it's uh, really grown on me over time and it's now one of my favourite cold weather fragrances. It's dark, dense, sweet and smoky, uh, with also like a, a waxy kind of texture to the overall aroma. This perfume parlor version replicates all the accents of the original uh, but at a tenth of the price so I'd highly recommend that you pick up a bottle of this before splashing at 120 quid on a, a full bottle of the original. It is regarded as a cold weather um, kind of wintery fragrance but here in the UK it gets pretty cold in the evenings and even uh, during some daytimes during the summer so I kind of find, find myself reaching for this pretty much all year round. It's a, a cracking fragrance and uh, one that I think you should definitely pick up. 
Yes, yeah, so in summary, the standout ones for me in this particular haul are the uh, Dior Hompa from Copy uh, and the one that I've just spoken about last, which is the Red Tobacco Copy. The D&G Masculine, uh, the Prada Luna Rossa Extreme and the Zerius Rouge copies are all really excellent and definitely worth picking up if you like more interesting smelling designer fragrances. The one I least enjoyed is the uh, the Tragedy of Lord George copy because it's just an overload of wood and nothing much else really. Uh, but on the whole, I'm well impressed with uh, these seven fragrances in this haul and I'm uh, lo definitely looking forward to uh, giving them a few full wearings. So once again folks, that's about it for this latest episode. Uh, but I'll be back within the next few days with something a little bit different from the perfume parlor. So make sure to look out for the uh, the next episode. And there might even be uh, a nice little cheeky giveaway for one of you early birds who tune in as soon as I upload it. And as always guys, if you found this video useful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to the channel. It's also great to hear all your, uh, your opinions, your thoughts and your critiques and all of the fragrances that feature in these perfume parlor videos. So don't forget to keep your comments coming down in that comment section. And if you've got any perfume parlor uh, recommendations that you'd like me to talk about and featured in future hauls, then please also let me know down in the comments. So once again, guys, thank you very much once again for tuning into this episode. Stay safe, keep smelling fresh, and I'll see you very soon for another one. Bye-bye for now.